Any progress with the case, Mr. Holmes? Good day. Your ticket, please, if you want me to help you. I'd like to check the evidence from this case. And who are you? Oswald sent me. I'm a consulting detective. His partner, then? Let me see. Ah, oh, a ritual murder. What a bunch of degenerates. Wait a second. I'll bring it to the table. An emergency kit for boredom. Not the time for privacy. Werner's personal sketchbook. A heavily perfumed handkerchief with the initials KM in the corner. It's a miracle this ruby hasn't tempted anyone. All the keys of the mansion on one golden ring. That's not for bedtime reading. Her key to the altar room. A handcrafted charm that contains hair and nail clippings. This ex libris belongs to Mancio's library. The book describes a ritual similar to the one performed in the altar room. Thank you, officer. I have reason to believe that the intended recipient of the incriminating letter may have been Kurt Manchos. Well, that makes sense. Too bad I can't remember how I came to possess it. Though I did spend quite some time with Mr. Manchios during the party. Unfortunately, even with an answer, that may still not be enough to clear you with the police. But fear not, I will persevere. I hope your attempt to put things straight will make up for... You being on a bender. Touché.
Could Fabio have written this letter to Kurt Manchios? Oh. That could be. I never thought Mr. Manchios could make Fabio that angry, though. What do you mean? Well, Fabio wanted to disassociate from Mr. Manchios. Clients who are in love are both a blessing and a curse. But Fabio was here tonight. Money. In our line of work, we can't afford to turn down clients who pay as well as Kurt Manchios. Was Fabio afraid of Mr. Manchios? Not at all. The old toad wouldn't dare to do more than sweet talk and touching. Talk can be forgotten, and touching washed away. This book, The Power of Love, Blood and Mandrake, what do you hope to achieve? To learn more about the invisible strengths that govern us. Occultism is real. The master who fell that night when Fabio and I escaped, I made him fall. I cast a spell on him and it worked. Or was it a coincidence? The universe is really so lazy. If you say so. Do you practice occult rituals? For protection? For fortune? To wash away the ugliness of the world? Sometimes to survive. I have the gift, and I'm learning to use it better. Did you use your gift on Fabio? I only used white magic. Love charms lately. Fabio became so distant. I just wanted him to be with me, but I suppose I'm not as skilled as I thought. Do you recognize this book? Could Matista have borrowed it from your library? She didn't ask me. How ungrateful. The things described in the book were inspiration for the rituals you performed? Do you really believe that blood, symbols, and incantations can resurrect the dead? They are just eerie tales with a mix of occultism and voodoo. My rituals are a stage to show some of the forbidden pleasures. There is undeniable evidence that you were the original recipient of this letter. What are you talking about? Is it addressed to me? Your protégé wanted a fresh start, it seems. This is sufficient to charge you. Me? Hurt my star? Are you insane that you would accuse me of such a thing? He did not consider himself as yours. Since you deny everything, let's move on. Do you have any idea as to how the letter could have ended up in Mr. Vogel's pocket? You were the detective. Perhaps he took it from Fabio. Werner was a little high. I appreciate your cooperation, Mr. Manchios. Please let me out. Please let me out. You'd better ask me a question I know how to answer. This letter proves nothing. Fabio wrote it to Mr. Manchios. It's time to free Mr. Vogel. Do you really think I'm that naive? I need proof, not words from his friend. Very well. 
Mr. Pinchetti told me that Mr. Manchios was lavishing Fabio with expensive and eccentric gifts. The letter mentions rich rewards and attempts to buy Fabio with them. It was written to Mr. Manchios. Who else was showering Fabio with luxuries to buy him? It doesn't fit Mr. Vogel's character. Look here. We had a deal. Give me the murderer and then take your friend with you. I won't budge otherwise. Well, fine, but you're just wasting time. Continue out. Our... Investigation while I look for the papers.
The murder of Fabio did not have a ritual purpose, Mr. Mancios. It was staged by a man who wished to distract the investigation. That might be true. That poor girl, Matista, wouldn't dare to kill the only man who cared for her. So, Santos? Mr. Pinchetti snatched at the chance to solve his problems. Ungrateful little scum. Will he be executed? But what for? He informed the police as to the crime, that was all. He couldn't stage the ritual, but he found the body, I believe. I can't believe it. Why did Werner do it? Mr. Vogel, he had no reason, and he won't be a scapegoat as you planned. You put Fabio's letter in his pocket when he was intoxicated, didn't you? You can't be serious. You're at the twilight of your life. You have no partner, you have no children. You had feelings, however, for one man. That was Fabio. You loved him. That is, you wished to own him with money and gifts. But he was also a free mind, was he not? He turned his back on. Quite unjust, love, so cruel and painful, and Fabio, with his words and deeds, made you feel the more wretched. So you killed him. You must surely perceive that my sensitive nature wouldn't allow me to hurt anyone. You staged the murder as a satanic ritual. It was easy for you, since you were the one who wrote the scenarios for the parties. It was your way of avoiding suspicion. A respectable man in his 60s, early 60s, who hosts the cream of Cordona society, cannot possibly be a murderer. But the guests who behave like animals in his mansion, of course, one of them could have killed Fabio. I did oversee a few of the rituals, but I did not stage Fabio's death. We can very often deduce someone's life by their shoes or their fingernails. You are a meticulous person, but this murder was fairly traumatic and filthy. After you stabbed Fabio, you were covered in blood. You panicked and neglected to rinse the soap from under your fingernails. The devil is in the details, Mr. Manchus. Nonsense. I missed it simply because of the busy schedule of the party. Of course, a staged murder was certainly not planned. Fabio played with your feelings. That was painful to realize. You spent so much time and effort to be with Fabio, but he didn't respond in the way that you would have liked. You wanted to be loved, but Fabio shattered your dreams. In the smoking lounge, he teased and mocked you. He wanted you to suffer by offering himself to others. The deception was unbearable. You were passionate, and so you struck him. Once you understood your mistake, it was too late. You were afraid, so you staged the ritual. With such a story, you might be sentenced to a few years. It might clean your conscience, and soon the case will be forgotten. No. No. This is my decision. I'll talk to Constable Oswald to see what I can do. There's no fool like an old fool. Kurt Mancios did it. A young boy played with the heart of an old man. The latter couldn't handle it. The evidence I obtained clearly shows that the quarrel was not intended to end badly. It was an accident. Showing pity towards your own kind, Holmes. <laughs> Whatever. All I'm saying is that prison won't take much away from an old and crushed man. Fine. A big name like that will still give me a promotion. As for my part, not everything was in place. Perhaps some documents were transferred somewhere else, but I couldn't find a trace of them. Then I remembered. The discarded document drawers where we put the lost papers or the badly labelled ones. Including the crime scene report of Violet Holmes's case. Everything I've found is on the desk here. Take it. Your persistence has saved me. Yeah, well, we had a deal after all. Your friend is free then. You can leave. Good luck, Constable. Oh, you did it, Sherlock! The case is closed and all rewards belong to the winner. Bravo! It is merely the triumph of the truth. Is it? No compromises? No lies? You're happy with your decisions? It was the best decision I could obtain. The truth must be told in the way it is most acceptable. You're making progress, Sherlock. I was right to believe in you. By the way, did you get that precious information about your mother? Oh, not that you must. Yes, I did. 
Forgive my intrusion in such a personal matter. I simply worry I'm failing to be of much help to you. Actually, you were. For some reason, all the archives on the case had disappeared. This was a rare opportunity to obtain the impossible. Outrageous. Perhaps someone found the truth unpleasant. Society usually rejects those who speak with too much honesty, doesn't it? A comfortable lie is often preferred to an uncomfortable truth. Still, I believe that the latter should prevail, and I cannot remain silent. That's quixotism at its best. Your mere truth cannot defeat institutions, systems, and power. Etiquette, religion, marriage, they're all lies told to preserve connections, love, and sanity, and it's all corruptible. Lies destroy human dignity. How could you make a free decision without any knowledge of the truth? Are we really free to decide anything in this world, Sherlock? Oh, yes. It's a struggle, but yes, we can make our own decisions. That's what I fight for. What an endless fight it is. Will you ever give yourself a break, Sherlock? You're a walking contradiction, Sherlock. You refuse to lie to others, but constantly lie to yourself. How long until the train comes off the track? I cannot look away, but perhaps I should take a few steps back. You're an accident waiting to happen, dear. Until then... I shall bid you adieu. Garden. There's a garden behind our manor. How could I forget? That's where it all happened, where it all went wrong. Looks like you've almost found what you wanted. Sherry, Sherry, please listen to me. Sherry. John, I always listen to you. You don't have to do this. You don't have to go through. I don't know what is beyond this door, but I can feel it. Buzzing, angry, like a fly at the window. I know. I can sense it too. You locked away this memory for a reason. There is only pain here. Pain? And truth? You do not need to suffer either. There is so much more we can do on Cordona, so many others we can help. There is no coming back from this.
John, my anima, my brother, there is nothing more important in this moment than this truth. I know you fear for me, but my path was set long ago. I can no more step off it than I can ask the avalanche to roll back uphill. Just please be careful, Sherry. I love you. Quite. Come on. We'll go together. Why didn't I remember we had such a big garden? Maybe you forgot it for your own good. That's the descendant of a tree your father planted in London, correct? Indeed, we planted the sprout here, and for a while it grew happily. Alas, it seems without us here to care for it, it didn't survive. we made together, John. Looks more like a pile of rotten planks now. What are you thinking about? Is everything all right?
Go, Mother, wait! I remember this artifact from Mother's collection. Mother's work journal. I liked poring over the detailed pages and reading about my parents' collection. It informs my... No, no. I have made my decision. She must be sent to a legitimate medical facility. I will not let her hurt show. What? Master Holtz, you do not understand. That will be all. I expect you to have left the house by week's end. Sherry, say something. Can you hear me? You're scaring me. Sherlock, I'm here. Come closer. Sherry, come here, darling. Coming, Mother. This was for my mother, wasn't it? I remember how we came to the garden for a breath of fresh air. Take me to my flowers, Sherry. They must already be in bloom. As you wish, Mum. I bet you missed the fresh air, didn't you? Terribly. The sun is far brighter than I remember. But I like it. We can walk each day from now on, if you want. That would be wonderful. Just look at them. The stars of the Earth. Even the sky must be jealous of their beauty. Indeed. Mother, would you like to go around the water? That would be perfect. I always wanted such a nice pond in London. It looks so peaceful. Mycroft knew you would like it. We should put some fish in it, don't you think? How about some carp? That's a nice idea. Let's visit your father's tree. It grows so fast, just like you. We could even build a tree house in it. <laughs> yes, Sherry. Speaking of your father, could you call him out, please? Mom! He's... I'm sorry. He passed away. He's gone. No, he's not. I'm telling the truth. Did you forget again? No! Don't you dare say such things! <coughs> you are a liar like all the others! Mother! Don't call me that! You aren't fooling me! No! You... Mommy hurts! My son would never lie! Mom, stop! Who are you? Reveal yourself! Please, stop! It's me, Sherlock! You are not my Sherry! Get me my stuff up or I'll throw you!
Sherlock. Sherlock. Can you hear me? Come on, wake up. Get off me. Sherry. You knew, and more than that, you hid it from me. You couldn't bear the truth, Sherlock, so I shouldered it for you. I took your pain, your horror. Otto Richter murdered my mother, and Mycroft covered it up. Whisked me away from this place, buried me in schoolwork, and, and left the past to rot. And you needed a way to cope, so I helped. You were a lie, John, a fiction, a crutch. No, I was... I was a friend. Sherlock, please. Sherlock? What? Are you okay? I don't know. I told you not to come, Sherlock. Where is he? Who? Your friend, John. He's beside you. Was all this worth it? Is he worth it? Why, Why is, is he, he here? here? I think, in his own way, he was trying to protect me. A truth I couldn't bear. But now I must face it. You kept me in the dark and kept your actions quiet. You enabled Richter and his untested quackery for far too long. Worse, you wanted to lock up our mother. I wanted to give you a chance at normalcy, at childhood. There was no changing what happened, no good to come of dwelling in the past. It was lies upon lies. Otto Richter killed our mother, and you kept it from me. You had no right. I deserved to know. You deserved to live, Sherlock. In his twisted mind, he killed her for you. But you didn't need to bear the burden of his choice. You were so fragile. I could not... I just couldn't. I chose us over him. You know, for, for once, I, I actually believe you. And perhaps, now that the truth is out, I can finally do what you had hoped. Leave it all in the past. Good. You have your whole life ahead of you, Sherlock. It is time you got home with it. I was worried there for a minute, Sherry. Really worried. I didn't want to hurt you. <laughs> What's so funny? I am talking to myself, John. I think I was hurt regardless. But we made a good team, eh? Explored every inch of this place together. Helped a lot of people. Terrorized a few too, I suppose. I think I may go so far as to say, Sherry, that I have not lived wholly in vain. So that's it. It's over. You've opened every door, Sherry. Faced the past, you locked away. You don't need me anymore. I know. I will miss you all the same. I don't want you to go. Bye, John. Why are you here? Closure, I suppose. Meant to help a friend. You and I are not friends. 
In a race between the thawing of the ice caps and our friendship, I would buy a boat. Ha! Is that right? I can see it now. I know what you did. What did I do? You... You needled me. From the moment we met, you were searching for weakness. You pushed me to pursue the truth about my mother. You questioned everything I did, everything I believed to... to break me. To blur truth and fiction, reality, morality. A saboteur in silk. Was it vengeance, Werner? Or do you prefer Klaus? Excuse me? You are Klaus Richter, Otto's younger brother. Do you hold me responsible for his end? Ha! There was no love lost between me and my brother. I am sure you can relate. Otto was merely the gravity that pulled me into your orbit. Or you into mine. Once I met you, I could not keep away. Why? What reason do you have for all this? To help you. You're lying. To show you that you were wrong. More lies. I know you now, Werner. Try again. To see what had happened. Or is that yet another untruth? Does it matter? Take your pick. Who cares? You're my masterpiece. I turned Sisyphus into Ozymandias. You could not see the futility of your quest until I helped you to let go of the rock. And now, nothing beside remains. I remain. Despite you and to spite you. It is a matter of will and power now. Will you overcome this or shall you decay? Oh, on that note, I brought you something. I want nothing more from you. When one wants for nothing, Sherlock, the best thing to get them is something personal. So, here you are. Now, please excuse me, but the gallery calls. I'm already conceiving my next project. After everything, Cordona felt hollow, cloying. I returned to London and joined Mycroft in his work for the Crown, but soon that too soured. He cannot abide me being right, or perhaps I cannot abide him being wrong. I left after two months. I enrolled at Cambridge University, though it proved similarly unsatisfying. The lectures were of limited interest. I am more obsessed with my work in a hospital laboratory, pursuing medical research and devising novel testing methods. At least there, I can be confident in the truth. I think about you in the evenings. I helped a woman with a trivial matter, and now others arrive at my door for assistance with their mysteries. We could have spent years on the case together, just like Cordona. But I didn't listen to you, John. And now you're gone. I found it! I found it! And what is that? How far, um, bruises may be produced after death? How are you? You have been in uh, Afghanistan, I perceive. How on earth did you know that? Uh, never mind. The, um, the question now is about bruising. No doubt you see the significance of this discovery of mine. Uh, it is interesting, no doubt, but practically... Why, it is the most practical medico-legal discovery for years. Had we these data sooner, hundreds of men would have paid the penalty for their crimes. Cases oft hinge upon how a man died. Now... We can know which wounds he suffered alive, which occurred post-mortem, and what instrument was responsible. And ergo, one will soon be able to calculate with utmost precision when and where death occurred, sparing the innocent and damning the guilty. Well, then you are to be congratulated. Indeed. But uh, uh, you came here on business. 
correct again. I, I am looking for someone with whom to take diggings, and heard you were complaining that you could get no one to go halves with you? I have my eye on a suite in Baker Street, which would suit us down to the ground. You don't mind the smell of strong tobacco, I hope? I smoke ships myself. That's uh, good enough. I get in the dumps at times and don't open my mouth for days on end. Just let me alone and I'll soon be right. What have you to confess now? It's best for two fellows to know what bruises each other carries before they begin to live together. My last companion and I... Well, I object to rouse because my nerves are shaken. And I get up at all sorts of ungodly hours. <laughs> and I am extremely lazy. I have another set of vices when I'm well. But those are the principal ones at present. Do you include violin playing in your category for rout? <laughs> it depends on the player. A well-played violin is a treat for the gods. A badly played one. Oh, oh, no, that's all right. I think we may consider the thing as settled. Oh, uh, forgive my manners. My attention wavers. Sherlock Holmes. Dr. John Watson. John. <laughs>